Hi friends, this is Joe. This is episode number 150 of the Decahedron RPG podcast. Although I suppose if you count the 33 episodes I did for RPG a day back in August, we'd be like episode 180, whatever, but whatever. I'm uh, trying something different today. Um, outside podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see that. If you're listening on the podcast, you might be able to hear it because it's louder here than I thought it would be. Um, but anyway, this is a feedback episode, or as we call them here, Mail Call. Mail Call from the United States of America. Joe. Evil Jeff. So yes, I do like feedback. I, I like hearing you hear other people call in and give you messages and some thoughts there. And, you know, especially if it's provoking further thought. I mean, if it's just a, hey, great message and thank you, know, great episode, da da and nothing really of any substance, I mean, I guess, I mean, that's just being congratulatory. Maybe you send them a note and say, yeah, cool. But I mean, most times when we call in, we're just like, hey, uh, thanks for that. And here's some additional thoughts or, oh, yeah, this sparked a different thought here. So, yeah, I, I like the feedback. Keep it up. Because I'm definitely, you know, I, I would tell you straight up, I'm not hunting you down on YouTube. Not really. Because most of my consumption of podcasts and things like that are in the car. And I don't need video. I, video takes up a lot of data. I don't need that. Who cares? It's just Let's just get the audio because that's what really matters. I don't need to see your face. You don't need to see my face. I just need to hear what you're saying. That sounds kind of mean, but you understand where I'm coming from there. Nobody needs to see my face. <laughs> Later. Thanks for that, Evil Jeff. By the way, everyone, Jeff is the host of the Minions and Musings podcast. Uh was on hiatus for a little while, but it's back, and it's great to have it back. Give it a listen. Uh, thanks for that, Evil Jeff. I think maybe I was a little unclear, by the way. When I said I didn't know whether I should pivot to YouTube, I didn't mean stop making the podcast episodes. I meant focus the content on content that would appeal to the YouTube crowd more than the podcast crowd. And the trick for YouTube <laughs> is to talk about D&D. Um, I talked about how my YouTube audience was now about four times bigger than my podcast audience. And now, well, last episode, because I didn't mention D&D &D in the title or on the card or anything, <laughs> that was like 60% of <laughs> the podcast episode. So, um, yeah, YouTube, you, YouTube people are fickle. And that's why I eventually decided... <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I need to be me and I'm not going to talk about D&D &D all the time. There are so many more role-playing games than D&D &D, and I love all of them. Lies. I love a lot of them. <laughs> um, as for seeing my face and not seeing my face, I think I just covered that right now. Um, I agree with you when I do most of my consumption of RPG-type media. It is while I am uh, running or walking or at the gym. You know, I put on my earbuds and um, that's when I do most of my listening. And some driving, uh, although I'm not making that uh, four trips back and forth to Niagara Falls every week, every month. Right, sorry. And uh, so that's cutting to a little bit of my time. Uh, cutting to my listening time, that is. Uh, but... I'm also driving to work more often now because my uh, normal job is doing away gradually with the uh, work from home thing. So I have a little bit of a commute back. So that's when I do most of my listening. So much like you, it's when I am not free to watch something, to look at something when I am uh, otherwise busy. So yeah, I, I agree. Um, like I said, the podcast isn't going away, and that wasn't even ever a question. The question was, do I want to pivot the content to content that appeals to YouTube more than the podcast? And the answer for that was no. Uh, and as for feedback, as you can see, I'm doing it 
uh, you were the only person that had a preference other than me. And I said, unless it was overwhelmingly against, and the only thing I heard was in favor of. So uh, feedback is here to stay. And I agree. I like podcasts with feedback. If I listen to a podcast that doesn't have any sort of inter yeah, audience interaction, I think that podcast isn't as good. Um, you know, when podcasts first started like 25 years ago, uh, was it that long ago? No. 2005, like 19 years ago, 20 years ago, we'll say. Um, you know, it was a new media. And the whole thing about new media, what, what made it great was, A, you didn't have to worry about broadcast constraints like content or always fitting into, you know, every episode's going to be 22 minutes or 44 episodes, minutes or whatever. You know, the episode can be as long as you need it to be to talk, talk about what you want to talk about and then no longer. And that was great. And the other thing was interaction with the community, that it wasn't just the one talking head, that people could call in and have uh, opinions. And like I said, when I listen to podcasts now, uh, don't have that. I, it disappoints me. It really does. So, yeah, there's that. So it sounds like we're on the same page on this, Evil Jeff. Uh, and I thank you so much for your uh, feedback. And uh, let's go to the next one. The next one is a comment that was left on YouTube by Carl of the Geomologist uh, podcast, also a great podcast. Give that a listen. He also has a YouTube channel uh, on YouTube. He does, from what I can gather, mostly like actual play type stuff, which is not a type of content that I'm a fan of. So I cannot say that I have watched it. I can't recommend it, but I have um, listened to his audio podcast. I, I subscribe to it and I do recommend that. And if you like actual plays for things other than D&D, &D, um, by all means, check out uh, the Geomologist. So let's see what he had to say. The Geomologist says, Fun overview, Joe. The first Traveler for me was Mega. I have played or collected all versions. I really enjoy Mongoose slash Cepheus. Amazing that you played with Hunter Gordon. I like the things he published a lot. <laughs> Hey, Carl, thanks for that. By the way, everyone, that was a YouTube comment that he left. So you can, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave comments down below. I suppose even if you're listening to the podcast and you want to find that particular episode on YouTube and leave a comment there, that sounds like a lot of work, though. Probably easier just to send an email or one of the many other ways to contact me. Uh, so Mega was your first. That's, that's interesting. Uh, I think Mega was even out, and I was still just buying the classic stuff. So Mega is a version I skipped entirely. Uh, it dawned on me when I was going through last week, the episode when I was going through all the editions, that I was talking about, you know, what was happening in the third Imperium for Classic Traveler, and then what happened in Mega Traveler, and then what happened in Traveler the New Era. And when I got to T4, Mark Miller's Traveler, I, I stopped because I don't know. And in fact, I was so curious about this that after the edit, I went back and I was looking through the book and everything to see. And But I only scanned. I didn't go in depth, right? Flip, flip, flip. And I didn't see anything. So I don't know what the answer is. So my only guess is that it was intentionally left out of the book. And I'm thinking that I kind of remember <laughs> that at one point, they said, we have all these different errors you could play in. Sorry, I'm being eaten by bugs here. <laughs> we have all these different errors of uh, play that you can play in here. Like, you know, the foundation of the Imperium, you know, the second Imperium, all that stuff. Uh, and they were going to sell you source books that way. And there was no universal setting for T4. But I don't know. Do you? If you do, let me know, because I'm, I'm really curious. Uh, the other thing, oh, you talked about Hunter Gordon. Yeah, Hunter was a great guy. Um, in addition to playing Traveler with him, uh, for a while back in the early 2000s, I had a blog called the RPG Gazette, where it was like a gaming industry news thing, you know, like Steve Jackson Games is going to publish this, or Grey Ghost has acquired a license for that, or whatever, you know, there's going to be a new version of whatever. Um, and he hosted that for me. He did all my web hosting, so it was free, and he did it on his servers, and I really appreciated that. And um, 
Oh, there used to be a program called Grip, which was generic role playing for internet players, I think. I think that's what the G was, but it was kind of like Roll20 before there was Roll20. Instead of being web based, the GM would run a server on his computer and all the players would uh, connect that way using a client program. That was cool. I, I liked it. Um, that is probably that's how I met him is because uh, I bought a license for it. And I sent him some feedback that, you know, I, I didn't like this, but I did like that type thing. And uh, yeah, so we just started talking. He invited me to play Traveler with him. Uh, really cool guy. And the other thing I didn't mention about uh, T20 was rather than placing it in uh, like the Spingward Marches, any of the GDW products, he licensed through Judges Guild and placed his T20 in the lay sector, which was a uh, one of the sectors that Judges Guild published for Traveler, kind of like they did the Wilderlands for D&D, they did the lay sector, and there were a few other sectors for Traveler. And much like Judges Guild's reputation in general, uh, the reputation traveler stuff is like they have some really awesome gems and they have some really big steaming piles of other stuff. And, um, but it, that's fair because they were just pushing stuff out and trying to get stuff out. And uh, some of it was great, some not so much, but you know, that's how life is. Thank you very much for that, Carmen, Carl, and thanks for listening. All right, our next piece of feedback is from uh, an episode that was called That Healing Feeling. And it dawned on me after I made that episode that I thought, okay, that was the name of the, po of the podcast episode. The YouTube channel episode, I named something boring, like alternate healing rules or something, because whatever. <laughs> But it dawned on me after I did that, that, oh, I thought that was clever, you know, it rhymed and everything, but I was like, wait, that's a, that's a Tunnels and Trolls healing spell. There's poor baby and then healing feeling. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So this is what Evil Jeff had to say about that episode. Joe, Evil Jeff. All right, so that healing feeling. Um... Yeah, I, I really appreciate those rules that you collected and put forth there, and uh, I think they're fair. I like the idea of speeding up the healing that way, uh, especially keeping track of each of the wounds. Uh, you know, and honestly, you propose it to your players and saying, "Hey, if you want to be able to heal faster than you know what the standard rules are, well, this is how I handle it," and remind them. They've got to keep track of that stuff because if they don't, well, you just heal it, what, one point a day. Sorry. So I like that. Um, and for those uh, users that have, those players that have um, characters, yeah, characters that have a higher uh, constitution bonus, adding that in during their healing is not such a bad idea as well because that sort of tells me that superhuman, you know, to the Zeke that they have, the ability to overcome things, to recover better. So that's that also promotes that idea as well. And how people that have weak constitutions always, this stuff seems to linger longer and longer. So, yeah, really appreciate putting that together. Now if we can just, uh, you know, put together, you know, make sure Jason understands that, you know, this is really the best way of doing things. So it'll be all right. Later. Hey, Evil Jeff, thanks for that. Um, yeah, as for, you know, addressing that with the players, that never occurred to me, although it's a good idea. Um, I've never had a player throw it back at me, and maybe that's because it's, it's only positive, right? Yeah, there's no negative drawbacks for the players. So, uh, but yeah, what you say is a good idea, checking with the, with the players to, to do that. Um, and really, because the only thing I ask for them is additional bookkeeping. Uh, yeah, other than that, I guess I'm, I'm glad that you liked it, uh, that we're on the same page. 
Um, I would say that, yeah, going forward, if I were to play a D&D or TNT type game where this isn't the standard rule, I would bring it up with the players. Uh, if I were going to do a homebrew where it's just part of the rules anyway, because it's my homebrew and I made it part of the rule, I probably wouldn't get their buy-in. I would just say this is how it works in this game. Yeah, that's that. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks a lot for the comment. Great comment. And again, folks, listen to... Uh, <laughs> Listen to Ming is Amusing. Such a great podcast. The other thing we had for this episode was a comment from Jason, which you mentioned that we had to get Jason on board. So let's see what Jason had to say. Jason says, So while I like these house rules for games where hit points are actual meat and blood points, I'm not sure about Gygaxian D&D where hit points are more than physical damage. All right. That was another YouTube comment. And Jason, I think that for Gygaxian hit points, that these systems work even better. But before I tell you why, let me tell everyone else who might not be familiar what Gygaxian hit point is. <laughs> so people have different thoughts about what hit points are, right? Um, some people think they are the meat and blood. They are an actual injury. Gary Gygax said, no, it's more than that. It's your position in combat. It's like, do you have the high ground type thing? Um, because remember, D&D combat is very, was at that time, very abstract. And you didn't do a step-by-step -step thing like we do now. Well, like some people do now. <laughs> the newer editions do. Um, it wasn't like that. So that's all these things were what hit points represented. It wasn't just your personal strength. It was your endurance, uh, your strength, your, your physical health. It was, it was your endurance. It was, like I said, your positioning. It was like the grip on your weapon. Were you getting tired? Were you on slippy ground? Did you lose your footing? Did you twist an ankle? Um, all these things. Um, and just to give you another side of the coin, our Arnesonian hit points were almost always only meat and blood hit points. Uh, so Dave Arneson said that in his original design, you didn't get more hits every, every level. Your hits were determined at character creation. And then as you gained levels, you became harder to hit. Uh, and I like that a lot. If I were going to do a D&D-esque homebrew, I would incorporate that over the ever-increasing hit points. So why do I think these healing alternatives work better? It's because now that hit points represent these non-physical injury things, it makes more sense that some of them can heal much quicker. And in fact, why wouldn't they if, I keep saying positioning. So if one of the things that, D, uh, that Gygaxian hit points represents is your relative advantage over the other combatant, and you lose that, then why, when that combat's over, does that carry over to the next combat, like, half hour later with some other totally different person? It doesn't make sense. These ways, when you get that healing roll, that bandaging, that self-aid, buddy care, that first aid, whatever you want to call it, right after the combat, that lets you represent, oh, well, he healed four points right away from that wound or that. So that let you hand wave that even better as then those were wounds. That was the positioning thing. That was the grip thing. That was the whatever thing. That was the confidence thing, whatever. And you can race that all over and just move ahead right then and there. Uh, so, so I'm going to disagree with you. When you said you, you don't think that it would work for Gygaxian hit points. I think it makes more sense for Gygaxian hit points, yeah, but that's me. Uh, let me know what you think. All right, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up here. It's kind of chilly. It's in the 40s. Uh, so thanks for watching and or listening. If you want to send me feedback, it's feedback at decahedron.com. You can call the feedback line, which is 562-RPG-CAST. Uh, all those ways and more on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, you can look at the episode uh, show notes or episode description. Actually, you can even do that on YouTube, and it's all right there. So again, thanks for watching and or listening, and until next time, happy gaming, happy life. Bye! Thanks for listening to the Decahedron RPG Podcast Please come back